Okay, so moving into 2024 then, what is your goal? 2024, my goal is 24 transactions. Okay. With, yeah, 24 transactions, two a month, doable, easy. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It totally is. If you really do the work, I honestly believe if you prospect daily three hours minimum and you're following up and you're really out there to help people, it will happen. So if new agents are coming into your office, what's some kind of advice that you'd be giving them? I definitely tell them to get on Espresso Agent. I tell new agents all the time, this business is an outbound sales business. People are not coming to you in the beginning. I mean, that would be nice, but it takes time to build that. When I first started dialing, I my first expired call that actually became an appointment became three sales. So I sold her property, helped her purchase a new property, and I double ended the, the sale. So it was that was when I realized I was like, oh, this is a new lead sauce source that I need to take um, take account into and take my time and really learn how to use. Hi, I'm Noelle with Today's Brew, where top producing real estate agents share their tips and tricks on taking more listings, making more money, and having fun doing it. On today's episode, we welcome Pyle Cure from the San Francisco Bay Area. Hi, how are you? I am doing very well. Thank you so much. Happy New well, Year. Happy New Year. Let's jump right into it. You're the first person on the show for 2024. Yay. Let's talk a little bit about you first and tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born in India, moved to the Bay Area in 1998. So I've been here for about 25 years now. Um, I actually got into real estate because I purchased my first home at 21 years old and I wasn't very impressed with the whole situation. I knew I could do just as good as them. And I was like, I can actually sell it. I can sell houses. So I um, invested, bought my first home at 21 years old. And I got my real estate license in 2007. I wasn't full-time. I still had another job and I actually went full-time COVID 2020. Wow. What a time. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It was an amazing time. I think it was perfect timing. The market took off. I had transactions coming left and right. And I was super excited about it. A lot of referrals, a lot from my sphere and started working in real estate. Awesome. So what changed for you um, between 2007 and then the COVID time to make it able for you to go full time? What did you start doing differently? Well, I think I was in um, nightlife, bartending and you know, hotel, I actually went to school for hospitality management. So hotels, restaurants, I worked in the industry. And when COVID happened, I didn't have a choice (laughs) pretty much. But um, once COVID happened, I think it made me focus on real estate Mm -hmm. and not look at it as a part-time. I looked at this as full-time. Well, this is the universe telling me to take a hundred percent and go, go in. So I went in full-time. Awesome. I too worked in restaurant for 17 years behind a bar and, Ah. um, So yeah, I know exactly where you're coming from and it can um, hold you back from your full potential because you have that safety net. Mm -hmm. Um, What did you, so what did you do? Did you start prospecting? Uh, How are you able to find your listings? Funny thing, the day they announced COVID, I I went and got my first time home buyer certification. I just started making phone calls in my database, my sphere, and the first three or four deals were all from my sphere. And once it started happening, I was like, oh, this is how it works. And I just started gain, gaining a lot more confidence. And uh, I didn't actually start dialing till about a year, year and a half later. Okay. Um, the first 2020, 21 was just sphere, open houses. I even went door knocking. Um, but I didn't start dialing till I moved to office. And my broker was like, you've never called before? And I was like, no. And 2022 is when the calling took off. And now it's one of my main sources. So tell us, what's your favorite source when you're dialing? I love expireds. They they are they're not the easiest. You have to mm-hmm. be able to what's that word? You have to be able to connect with them and let them know you're not just looking for a sale. You're actually there to help, and you're not just you don't have commission breath. You really want to ask a lot of questions to find out what the actual issue is and why the home didn't sell, why they think the home didn't sell, what they're looking for in a real estate agent. You just have to ask a lot of questions to figure out the motive and to see if you're a good fit, because sometimes you might not be a good fit. 
Absolutely. Now, the questions that you're asking, are these coming from scripts or a coach? Do you have a coach? Are you? I currently do not have a coach. I did do um, Tom Ferry coaching for a year mm -hmm. and I had an amazing time with it. I actually learned a lot of scripts. My company, my brokerage likes Mike Ferry a lot. So I went to the Mike Ferry conventions and I started learning his scripts. I also follow uh, Brandon Mullerin, Ricky Carruth. I, I'm constantly on YouTube just listening to people and hearing how they talk and constantly listening to expired scripts. I've also been on the Objection Slayers, obviously, with Espresso mm -hmm. Agents and heard her script. So I'm constantly looking for bits and pieces from different directions to put together and make it mine. Because I, I feel like you have to be very genuine in this business. And yeah. you take bits and pieces from everyone and it, pull it out, as you would say, and help people. And make it pile. Yeah. <laughs> not exactly. make it authentic to you and, and, and not so radio-like, like you said, or just repeating. Um, so how was 2023 for you? Very honest, 2023 was a little tough after 2022 because 2022 was an amazing year. I actually was top 10 in tarot agent, top 10 agent wow. in San Francisco, Silicon Valley. So it was it was a lot and it was very, mm -hmm. it was such a great year. So to come back and have 2023, <laughs> it was a lot. It was a, a reality check. You know, you had to work extra hard. Um, I did not hit my goals, but I'm very proud of what I did. I still helped a lot of families and it just taught me a lot of lessons. You have to double down, work harder, prospect more than you normally would mm -hmm. um, and just go talk to people, have these meaningful conversations. Don't be a secret agent. <laughs> Don't be a secret agent exactly. Um, okay. So moving into 2024 then, what is your goal? 2024, my goal is 24 transactions. Okay. With, yeah, 24 transactions to a month. Doable, easy. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It totally is. If you really do the work, I honestly believe if you prospect daily three hours minimum and you're following up and you're really out there to help people, it will happen. Absolutely. So tell me what your mornings look like then for prospecting when you get up, when you get on the phones. I'm usually up between six and seven, depending on how early I went to bed. <laughs> um, up to six and seven, and I'm I'm at my desk every day at eight o'clock, no matter what. Okay. I'm making calls at eight a.m. I try to get on my desk at seven thirty, watch a couple of YouTube expires, or read a script, and just practice with myself. And then I'm ready to go at eight a.m. I have a mirror in front of my desk, so I'm looking at myself. I'm smiling. I'm standing up and talking and calling. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I sit sometimes, but for the <laughs> most part, I try to be very upbeat and and just dial for hours until I get those appointments. And the standing up in the mirror, how, how do you feel that's changed your prospecting? I'm usually like, I, I believe the mirror allows you to look at yourself and remind yourself to smile because mm -hmm. they don't want to hear someone that's just, hi, how are you? Are you ready mm -hmm. to sell your house? Like they want to hear <laughs> enthusiasm, excitement, you're, you're motivated. You have the energy to do you mm -hmm. know, it's a, tough, it's a tough career and people don't understand that. I think people think it's the TV shows make it seem like it's just, yeah, I'm just going to sell Glitz your house. And glamour. Glitz and glamour. Glitz and glamour. Exactly. <laughs> but there's a lot of work in the back end and prospecting is our main job is to prospect. How do you, so how do you keep a healthy mindset prospecting? Does the standing up in the mirror help with the mindset throughout the day? Are there other tricks that you can offer agents that are not having maybe a good day on the phone and they just want to click, hang up, be done for the day. So I, one thing I've taken, I've, I've had pretty tough stuff being said to me. So when that happens, you have to sometimes take a break and step away from it. You can't, you know, stay in that mindset because it will affect you. But in a general, I usually brush it off and just keep on going. But sometimes I've had stuff where I'm like, that was a little over the top. <laughs> um, okay. But um, for the most part, I'm affirmations. I am a successful top producing real estate agent. I'm here to help people. I'm I'm motivated. I'm, I just tell myself every day, like, this is, this is what I'm doing. And I, I come from a place of really genuinely helping people. I, like I said, I'm very passionate about real estate because I started because I bought my own house and I didn't enjoy the experience. So 
that's my mindset. When I came into the business, I was like, I want to make this. I want someone to explain to me what's going on. It's a big investment. It's probably the biggest investment you're going to make. So working with someone that's there to help you and actually guide you and be your partner mm -hmm. rather than just sign, 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 and let's go. So my goal is to ask a lot of questions, figure out the motivation and guide them through the finish line. Okay. Well, it sounds, I mean, you have a great personality. It's very Thank sparkling you. and refreshing. So I'm sure you have no problem getting people to um, want to work with you and trusting you and the process, which, which is all very important. Um, let's talk about maybe just a couple objections and how you would handle them. Um, so since it's the new year, maybe some of the things we all might be hearing are, I'm waiting till spring. I'm waiting till spring. How do you handle that? <laughs> I understand that you would like to wait for spring, but don't you think that's what everyone else is doing? My goal is to get your home shown in the best light with less competition. So if we wait till spring, a lot more sellers will be listing their home in the springtime. Why don't we get ahead of them, get your house in the market in the next month or so, two, three weeks to get prepped for the market. That way, buyers are already out, by the way. Buyers are not waiting for spring. They're already out. Interest rates have dropped. They've dropped nine consecutive times since October. So why not we get ahead of the spring buying season, put your house in the market so all eyes will be on your house and get the highest price possible. Well, that sounds great. That's a great plan. Let's do it. And I think I think you're right about that. It's it's funny how many sellers do want to say, let's wait till spring and and don't think automatically that everyone else is doing the same thing and it's more competition for their home. Um, what about commission cutting? Do you have sellers? Absolutely asking not. <laughs> to buyers, <laughs> I say absolutely not. When a buyer asks, and this is, I don't know why it's becoming, since the whole lawsuits and everything, mm -hmm. it's become more, more of a question. And I tell them absolutely not. For sellers, of course, there's a case by case circumstance for every individual. But if this is a standard, oh, I'm going to be a discount broker, that's ruining the industry, in my opinion. It's exactly. I am a human being that understands case by case scenario, mm -hmm. but I don't like the, I don't appreciate the people that standard. I'm going to list for 1%. 1%, how are you making enough <laughs> to take care of your family and pay your bills with a 1% listing? I just don't yeah. understand. Yeah, no, that's. I'm not going to do that either. So if new agents are coming into your office, what's some kind of advice that you'd be giving them? I definitely tell them to get on Espresso Agent. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I think it's a great source. Um, I tell the new agents, there's a couple of new agents in my office and they are just amazing. They're 21 year, years old and just their tenacity and they're in the office every day, 9 a.m. They're calling the, the way they say their scripts. I, I feel like I need to practice a little bit more. <laughs> But um, I tell new agents all the time, this business is an outbound sales business. People are not coming to you in the beginning. I mean, that would be nice, but it takes time to build that. So definitely be positive, come from a place of help and, you know, just genuinely caring about people and helping the situation rather than a place of, I want to make a sale. And it gets you a lot further because if you genuinely want to help people, I believe that's, that helps a lot more in everything. Absolutely. How would you say that espresso agents changed your business? I, when I first started dialing, I, my first expired call that actually became an appointment became three sales. So I sold her property, helped her purchase a new property and I double ended the sale. So it was, that was when I realized I was like, oh, this is a new lead sauce source that I need to take um, take account into and take my time and really learn how to use and because I mean there's expired there's neighborhood search there's there's just everything you can you can find different avenues to to get data and make phone calls exactly you can I have to be honest I haven't really tried the neighborhood search but I mm -hmm. need to look into it because no one's doing that so <laughs> let's going. do it this week <laughs> Yeah. You can, what 30 minutes if you're on the phones for three hours girl that's that's oh. impressive a minimum every day yes minimum three hours a day some days i've sat in my house for like six hours when i'm home and i'm just like dial 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 it's it's incredible now does that mean if you're does that mean you're not doing just listed and just slow calls no i'm not i'm just doing mainly expireds and i do sometimes circle prospect I don't do just, I do just listen just so like I said, I need to focus more on that. Yeah. But my main source is expired because you know, you already know that they're 
they're motivated, they want to sell, and they're they always list again. Like usually, yes, absolutely. How do you get around the um, objection of them saying that they are going to use their agent that they were already using? Well, I say, why didn't? Why don't you think the first six months was enough time for them to sell <laughs> the property? Like, are you looking to help a friend or are you looking to sell your house? You know, absolutely. I, I, I pretty much take what they say and ask them the question back. Well, you want to use your agent? I totally understand and appreciate that. But what did your agent do the first time where it didn't work? And why would you use them again if it didn't work the first time? Was six months not enough time? That's perfect. Perfect. Or would you like a second Can I get you the appointment? Yes, exactly. It does. Would it's it, awesome. It awesome. Makes sense. You know, you wouldn't, this is your biggest asset. Wouldn't a second opinion make sense? 10, 15 minutes of your time. Are you free Tuesday at four or Wednesday at four? Perfect. Thank you so much for coming on. What a refreshing way to start the new year. I hope you hit your 24 goals. I know you will. Thank you. you. Perfect. I'm going to touch base with you towards the end of the year and see if you did that and where you're at with your goals. And maybe we'll have you back on for a little follow up. Awesome. I would love that. Um, tell everyone how they can get in touch with you. Social media, um, just how, how we can send you referrals. Instagram, pilecure.realtor. My phone number is 415-702-7330. And Facebook, pilecure. Pilecure Homes. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for your time, Noel. Have a great year, everybody.